Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Tangerine Dreams' uh, live album from 1980 when they went from West Germany to East Germany to um, uh, create this uh, concert for the East Germans. Uh, East Germany was obviously under communist rule at the time, and uh, Tangerine Dream was the first um, Western uh, Western musical group that was um, invited to come into East Germany and have a concert. And um, so this was a big deal for mainly for East Germans uh, because uh, they were able to um, have a concert, uh, a live concert, which was, um, you know, uh, from the west side of the wall, basically. And so Tangerine Dream is a group that was founded in 1967 by um, Edgar Frosch. Um, I think I'm saying his name right. Am I? Well, I think that's how you say it. But anyways, so this group goes way back to the 60s and they they did a lot of things to uh, in, in regards to opening the doors for other electronic acts, um, kraut rock, which, you know, people call it kraut rock, but I think there should be a better name for it because kraut rock is kind of um, demoralizing in a way. But um, right now, uh, in 2022, the uh, Edgar Frosch um, died in 2015, and um, since then, uh, the the members that have kept go kept the the kept the the musical group going are Thorsten Quesching, Hosh Hoshiko. Yamane and Paul Frick. Sorry about, you know, um, sorry, Thorsten, your last name is quite unique and quite difficult to pronounce, so I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, um, most people know uh, Tangerine Dream from their, 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 uh, from the time when they were really, uh, popular in the sense uh which was in the 70s and uh the lineup for that was was uh christopher frank peter bauman and um uh of course uh edgar frosch and uh, uh actually klaus schultz was was the drummer for on their first album but then quickly left the group and, and started uh, his solo album um, career. Kind of like similar to what Vince Clark, Vince Clark um, was part of Depeche Mode, but, but he, he only stuck around for the first album. And then he went off and uh, f uh, found Andy Bell and... Uh, informed erasure um but and of course klaus schultz is and erasure and depeche mode these are all electronic acts and uh so you can definitely um say that tangerine dream has has uh built the foundation for the electronic scene or electronic music to flourish in Germany and throughout the world since their inception in the late 
um, late 60s. So, um, so today we're going to be reviewing that live album that they that they uh, uh, recorded when they went to East Germany. And uh, the album itself uh, was was initially called a lot of a lot of people know the name as per Pergamon this like now uh, because uh next to the building that they they did the live concert there there was the um architectural um his, his historical uh history museum Per Pergamon, which Pergamon was uh, was was in Turkey in in the during the ancient times, and uh, so that's where per Pergamon comes from. It was a uh, it was a uh, um, Greek civilization that that was within the boundaries of Turkey, and it was kind of a melting pot of of uh, civilizations, um, kind of like New York City today. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so we're going to be listening to Pergamon. And uh, when it was released into the Western world, they changed the name to Pergamon. It, it was uh, called Cushet or Q-U-I-T... Uh, the reason why they gave it that name, naming it, it the original album art has a tangerine with a with a a plug in it, and uh, it's called Cushet Cushet, because uh, not only was Pergamon next to the building where they were um, recording the live album, there was also a cinema like a kino and um they they were showing at the time of the of the recording Cachette is actually Don Quixote and there was a film that <laughs> they were playing at the theater and that was uh it was it was a Don Quixote movie so they decided to name the the concert and the music after that Don Quixote. Cushotte. Cushotte. Also, one thing that I wanted to mention is that during this concert, it's the first um, introduction to the world with uh, Johannes Schmoling, a uh, pianist, that was um, uh, within the concert, of course. And... Uh, during this concert they were still gathering in like like material for their upcoming al new, uh, upcoming album which was um, which was actually um, tangram I believe um, so yeah tangram so uh, and so during this concert that they had in East Germany, it was the first time that he he played with the group, and uh, in a live concert, and uh, so it was a kind of an introduction to the world uh, with him as part of the one of the uh, band mem members of Tangerine Dream, Johannes Schmoling. All right, so let's talk about the music. So. The way I like to approach long, long um, works, such as this one, it's actually, <laughs> this one's broken up into two, part one and part two. And within part one and part two, uh, the way I, the way I go about it is that I break, break up the work into sections. And the way it works is kind of like classical music, like first, first movement, first movement, second movement, third movement, fourth movement, fifth movement, and sometimes sixth movement, right? 
but not kind of that that's the max right so break it up into six pieces um and the way i look about it uh the first movement it, the movements are always uh characterized and and by the emotion and the also the the way there that the music is played is it played fast is it played slowly is it played semi slowly <laughs> is it allegro or is it um you know moderato or adante or um just just different types of and all of these phrases are in italian because a lot of the italians you know creating classical music they 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 kind of characterized the music depending on how fast how, how fast the music or how slow the music is going and also uh to a certain point the the mood of the music the, the type of mood that you you get by listening to the music so anyways with this uh first uh, four minutes into cachette. Cachette is like, like I said before, um, it's uh, Don Quixote. <laughs> and uh, anyways, um, the four, the first four minutes is just, just piano playing, uh, solo piano t um, take, and it 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 starts off slow and then builds up with more fast paced uh piano playing and and then it kind of slows down again and that, that it kind of fluctuates from from slow to fast and back to slow and then as it approaches the 5 minute mark there's you can kind of hear synthesizers you know uh replacing the piano playing and from four minutes to five minutes, there there is a kind of a du duet kind of between the two instruments, which is one, the piano, and, and another kind of uh, synthesizer sound, which they kind of play back and forth, uh, kind of like improvisation, right? Um, but... And then, of course, uh, after ten minutes, uh, you can kind of it. Uh, the synthesizers are are being played out, and it sounds like stars are falling out of the sky. You know, kind of like uh, obviously a synthesizer sound, not my m mouth. But <laughs> anyways, um, yeah. Around the fourteen minute mark, it it kind of. The percussions and the synthesizers go at it, you know, like they, they're, it's kind of like a duet with the percussions and the, and, and the, and the synthesizers playing out kind of in a very, um, aggressive Allegro style, um, playing, playing it out as in almost like, uh, crescendo of the the part crescendo of part one basically around the 16 minute mark there's this uh along with the synthesizers and the percussion there's this beautiful flute playing probably created by um synthesizers but nonetheless it it sounds very beautiful it 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 it, it almost overtakes the overtakes the percussion and the synthesizers in becoming dominant within the actual musical piece you know the 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 focus on what every everyone focuses on is the flute because the flute is it's it's above it's above the synthesizers and above the uh percussion playing and it it's it just overtakes the song the flute playing i mean it's it's just gorgeous and then as the crescendo uh goes away and uh, the flute playing stays 
around uh, 20 minutes it kind of it simmers down to a boil you know from a, a volcanic uh, be, be, beforehand it was a volcanic explosion right but now it's simmering down to just a boil and uh, it's kind of getting more and more quiet at the 20 minute mark and then at the very end, kind of around 23 minutes of part one, um, the synthesizers are like, are the sound of the sim synthesizers are being, s are simmered in the hot water and kind of shh, kind of like shh, and then going away. And then, <laughs> then uh, there's the, the sound of the falling stars are coming back and all you can hear is like the kind of like from a high point going down down and and then at the very end you can kind of hear voices not in, incoherent voices um which are played at the very end and I don't know if that that's the kind of because it was a live recording because there were people there if that was just meant to be to be sounded like sound like that but you know that it is what it is at the very end it's it's this very big like echo sound with people he hearing people in in incoherent uh voices so if that was intended i i don't know but nonetheless it's on the recording all right so now we're into part two which starts off with very spatial music uh kind of you know like the stars falling and it's kind of uh, very like thought provoking because you're like looking out and you see these stars and and the you know the universe goes on forever and um it's so vast and so big it's it, it almost makes you feel small <laughs> because you are right <laughs> compared to the universe you know the size of the universe anyways um from it, the part two starts at 24 minutes approximately and uh from 24 minutes till 27 minutes um it is kind of like very spatial very moderato adante slowly uh, kind of uh, like uh ambient music and then about uh a minute and 30 seconds in uh the percussions it's the percussions turn to shine and kind of show off you know kind of a impro improvisation of of uh of uh drums and uh it's t it's 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 moment in the piece where it shines through and uh really goes into a very percussive moment in the piece around 27 minutes uh there the it starts to heat up and the synthesizers start there's this very um strong synthesizer sound that that starts from 27 minutes onwards and around 30 i'd say well yeah around 30 minutes uh there's a guitar sound, guitar that comes in and uh it's i i personally it's not not the least i i don't like it as much as maybe others would but but that's my personal opinion i from 30 minutes on to till about um 40 minutes the guitar keeps playing and <laughs> it's just it's just overkill in in some ways but you know they can do what they want right i mean within that but to me it it seems to me like it's too long and I give 10 minutes for a guitar anyways 
And so around 43 minutes uh, into part two, you can kind of uh, hear it slowing down, you know, the instruments, all the combination of the, the, the synthesizers and the, and the percussions and the guitar all playing all at once. Um, slowly you can hear those instruments falling off and eventually um, it becomes more kind of a quiet, quiet song. And kind of around, like I said, uh, around 40, well, 43 minutes, 44 minutes, it, it, it gets really interesting and sounds very good. Um, but shortly thereafter, um, the piece ends and you can hear the audience clap um at the very end which is which, which is nice i i like it when I, you can hear the audience in the live performances um not necessarily during the actual music but at the very end you know when they clap it kind of makes you feel like you're in a in a concert right so yeah so that that's pretty much uh cachette cachette uh uh part two I personally, I, I like part one more than part two, mainly because of the guitar. I mean, the guitar is just so overpowering, and I, I mean, I think when it comes to Tangerine Dream, what they do best is the synthesizers, and uh, they can't go wrong with that. But, but the guitars, I mean... They're okay. I mean, I'll, I'll listen to it, right? But, but where Tangerine shines the most is synthesizers, and that's my personal opinion. So, um, I mean, in in regards to uh, giving this album a ranking one to ten, I'd give it a solid uh, eight out of ten because it it is one of those recordings that were historical and and not, not only that it uh it was the first time you could hear Johannes Schmoling um within the within the, playing with the group and his the piano playing is just beautiful and and then um also um I really like some of the synthesizer uh parts in uh part one and you know you, you you can hear it yourself tell me what you think about it if you th feel the same way or if you don't i you know uh everyone has their opinion and this is just mine so take it with a grain of salt and uh, uh hopefully this is a recording that you that you'll enjoy and if you've never heard about it and you want to hear it go ahead um it's it's beautiful um it's one of the first albums i i that i got apart from um hyperborea which was from 1983 this this live recording was from 1980 and uh they were just about to release tangram and they were still you know, gathering uh, material for that album. But anyways, tell me what you think. Give me a thumbs up, uh, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Let's let's uh, make my channel grow. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um... <laughs> um... <laughs> so yeah definitely if you like these kind of reviews i review electronic albums um new and old okay i know that that might sound like another youtuber but i do i do like old and i do like the new and uh, so i on on occasion i do review old albums and i do review like new releases and albums that sound interesting to me if you there is any kind of album 
that you enjoy um, and would like me to hear it and, and review it, let me know in the comments. And so I'm signing off. I'll see you in the next review. Thanks for listening.